company behind this sensor is a competitor to Elon Musk's Neuralink. Musk's company is developing a BCI of its own that aims to help people with paralysis restore some independence to their lives. So how does this all work and is this the future? Joining us right now is Kurt Hagstrom, Synchron's chief commercial officer. Kurt, great to have you here. So in, here. in layman's terms for non-scientists like myself in our audience, explain how this brain sensor works. Yeah, essentially it collects uh, the neural signals. When you think of moving, what happens is your brain actually fires signals and those signals can be captured by the sensors. In our case, our stentrode BCI. And so those sensors then get translated and decoded uh, that translate into digital actions such as scroll, click, um, move the cursor. Um, so those are all things that can be done by translating those little signals, electrical signals within the brain. And then how do you communicate? Do you type something out? Do you, yeah, how do you do that? Yeah, so what we're collecting is motor signals, motor intent signals. So it's almost like, you know, using your, your arms to type on a keyboard or move on a mouse, you use those same intent motions to control the computer. So you're able to use a keyboard um, using the switch control accessibility functionality on the iPad to be able to type out, send a message, or use a, a kind of advanced uh, communication tool. So your company's a competitor to Elon Musk's Neuralink, but you have different procedures uh, from Neuralink in how Synchron implants the sensor. Uh, it's a lot less invasive to get your sensor than Neuralink's, right? Yeah, it's really revolutionized, uh, I think, the approach for <coughs> planable computer interfaces, where uh, over the last really two decades, uh, brain-computer interfaces have required, including Neuralink, required to remove the skull, which is called the craniotomy, and either place uh, the sensors on the brain or actually in the brain itself. Um, our founders um, thought of a different way and a different approach and say, can we take the blood vessels, the pathways that are, you don't have to open up the skull, to be able to get on top of the brain and listen to the brain without actually touching the brain itself? So this means, uh, like, are there, is it like an hour-long procedure to get that thing implanted? Is it that simple? Believe it or not, it is. And, and much like the, the world of cardiology today, where there's, there's millions of stents today put in the coronary arteries, there's tiny little blood vessels within the heart. Um, those same tiny little blood vessels are actually in your brain, and that's what brings blood to your brain. And so we're use, use, using those and capitalizing on those highways to be able to get to the areas of the brain where we, we can we, uh, record and create those digital actions. ALS is a devastating disease. There's no cure for it. It's, it's, a, it's just terrible. But could this implant help not just people with ALS, but others as well who are paralyzed for some reason? Yeah, that, that's a great question. There's actually about 15 million people globally, about 3 million people here in the U.S. Um, that have a limitation, a motor impairment in their upper limbs. So they can't they can't use an iPhone like we can, right? So they mm -hmm. can't use a device and a technology uh, that we take for granted, these supercomputers in our pockets anymore. And this is where the benefit will come in of having an implantable BCI for those that maybe had a stroke or spinal cord injury, where again, they lost that function of their upper limbs. It's critical that they have that restored independence and autonomy in that digital world now. It really has changed Mark Jackson's life. How soon might this be widely available to all those millions of people who have some sort of paralysis? Yeah, look, th this is a, a class three medical device. Um, there's no easy path. We've been we've been at this for 13 years uh, and work in close collaboration with the FDA. Um, and so um, I don't think this is another 10 years away. I think this is um, you know, within the next two or three years, we're going to be able to see this type of technology uh, for people in the open market. Wow. Two or three years, uh, probably two or three weeks would be too long for some of those folks. But that's really incredibly promising. And most exciting of all is the fact that you guys can implant this thing in the brain so simply. Um, Kurt Hagstrom, really fascinating news. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Subscribe below and download our News Nation app right now on your phone, and you will get fact based, unbiased news for all Americans.